So we just saw two high-speed tyre failures for Max Verstappen and Lance Stroll at the Baku Grand Prix. I've just spoken to a tyre expert and they have explained to us what is the most likely thing to have happened. The first thing to understand is that after the Silverstone Grand Prix last year where we saw multiple tyre failures, Pirelli knew that this was a problem and they released a new tyre, a new construction for the 2021 season. This tyre was heavier and stronger to stop exactly this type of failure. Last year the main problem was with the front left tyre and that was failing because of all the high loads at Silverstone through corners such as Cops, Maggots and Stowe. And so on to Baku this year and Pirelli actually changed the minimum tyre pressures that the teams are allowed to run from 19 psi to 20 psi. Now for the teams a lower pressure in the tyre offers more grip for the drivers and so they want to run the cars as low pressure as they possibly can. However, with a lower pressure, it means that the structure of the tyre will move around more when the car's under load in the corners and due to the downforce that is put through the tyre on the high-speed parts of the track. The cars were actually on a softer compound this year at Baku than they had last year. The tyre compound was a step softer. This is normally in an effort to increase the degradation that's how quickly the tyres wear out during the race, which typically that improves the racing and opens up opportunities for overtakes. So with a softer compound and more wear going through the tyres, you might think that Verstappen and Stroll's tyre failures was due to the tyres wearing out more quickly. But having looked at their tyres, it seems like the amount of tread the tyres had was pretty decent. So what exactly happened? During the Grand Prix, I spoke with a tyre expert to try and explain what actually happened. And he said that the tyre failures looked to be happening at the shoulder of the tyre. That's where the side of the tyre, the sidewall of the tyre meets the tread. This is the weakest part of the tyre and where several parts of the internal construction all join together. It's also incredibly thin. As you can imagine, every time the tyre is loaded up, whether that's through braking, cornering or acceleration, the tyre is stretching and compressing. And if you marry this with high loads through the downforce and repeat this over and over again, the tyre will fatigue. This is a bit like how you can bend a plastic ruler a few times and it doesn't snap. However, if you repeat this 20, 30 or 40 times, eventually it will fail. So the part of the tyre that looks like it has failed is the internal fabric of the tyre. It's the structure that holds the rubber together. And you can see this in a tyre that I cut open a while ago. And this was the previous generation of Pirelli tyre that actually had steel breakers. They don't use these anymore, but rather use a combination of Kevlar, nylon and polyester to create a strong structure that supports the tyre. This combination of materials allows the tyres to withstand three tonnes of sideways loading and over a tonne of downforce as well as the shock forces from the road and the kerbs. So the tyres could have been weakened through these massive loads and then after the high speed corners at the start of the Baku straight and then the high speed rotation the tyre was literally pulled apart. And as you might imagine, at these high speeds and these high rotations, all it takes is one section of this fabric to fail for the whole rubber to then rip apart and you have a rapid deflation of the tyre. I've actually happened to this while I was testing an old Benetton Formula 1 car at Silverstone. The inside tyre let go as I was heading into Cops corner and as soon as it lets go you have this strange feeling at the back of the car before you then go spinning off into the runoff area and it doesn't matter if you're the best driver in the world as soon as that tyre lets go you go spinning off the track and it seems Pirelli did foresee this they increased the air pressure in the tyres on Friday which will extend the tyres life if at risk from a fatigue failure but clearly that wasn't enough we also saw Lewis Hamilton sending some conflicting messages on his radio about his tyres in Baku today. If you want to find out why, click here. Cheers and I'll see you next time.